I would like to now introduce our presenters and our presentation for today, Omni Shortwave Diathermy Overview and Integration with AC+. Our presenters today are Anthony Giampetro, Physical Therapist and Clinical Program Consultant, and Barry Thompson, Senior Manager of Product Development at ACP. Anthony? All right, thank you so much for that kind introduction and thank you everybody for making time today to learn a little bit about um, the new Omni SWD, some of the features that you might be aware of and even some that you're not aware of. Um, so it's my pleasure to share with you um, as Jody introduced, we want to focus more so on using the device. Like, show me some, maybe we can show you some features that you aren't necessarily aware of that the diathermy drum can do. Um, and then kind of even show you some new technology that may be available to you um, very shortly. So how I like to do this is I demo everything from the bottom up. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but that kind of helps me orient you to all the pieces of the machine and might even answer some questions that you have um, looming. So let me start down low here. This is our Omni SWD, and um, I'm going to turn the device around. Let me set this up so that you can actually see it. Now, I might get a better angle here. There we go. So, a lot of times clinicians will ask me, hey, Anth, what's up with everything at the bottom of the unit here? And um, one of the features that's kind of new, if you're used to our Megapulse 2 uh, technology, which was the unit prior to this one, is you have a power switch now, okay? Now, it doesn't say on or off, but the little... Uh, uh, tip I give everybody is just keep in mind that a straight line means power can get through and a circle you can think of as the stop. So not sure if you can get a good angle on that, but this is what we're talking about right here. You want to make sure that that switch itself is depressed with the um, straight line position um, to ensure that you're getting power into your unit. Now another really handy feature I think as a consultant with the Omni SWD is the cord has a lock on it. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that feature before, but this is actually new to me. I've never seen that on any electrical device, but this is a hospital grade wire and it has a lock built into it, which uh, I actually love because if you're ever, you know, moving the unit, not realizing that the cord's getting short, you might before have had a cord that just pulls and, and loosens that type of thing and this prevents that. So I always like to make clinicians aware of that. Uh, also so that you don't go pull on it, not expect that it's a, a lot stronger pull than you might have thought and you're preventing injury out of yourself, okay? So that's the base of the unit. One other feature, every wheel now has a lock on it. So um, I'll just zoom in on one so you guys can get an idea of it. Um, really easy to depress and release. Um, definitely don't encourage you to use your hands for that for infection control purposes. But what I do like to emphasize is the importance of locking every single wheel so that you can make sure the machine isn't moving when you go to position your patient. It's very difficult to get an optimal treatment if your patient and your device can move. So definitely take the time to make sure you're uh, locked at every wheel for safety concerns. And we're going to work our way up the unit now a little bit. I'm going to zoom in. And what I really want you to kind of get an idea of is the uh, coax cable here. There we go. Um, how this unit works is when you plug into the wall, it's going to pull current from the wall. And you can kind of think of this as like a radio transmitter. It's going to get the frequency where it needs to be. And once that's done, everything goes through this coax cable, which connects to the top of the drum, which you're seeing right there. Okay. Now, why I like to point this out to you, I've had a number um, of clinicians tell me, hey, Ant, the machine's not working. It's giving me an error message. It says something about a coax cable, and I don't know what that is. Well, that's what we're talking about right here. And just to give you some quick tips on maintaining the health of the coax cable, it can unplug from either end, okay? So a lot of clinicians aren't aware that if you just give a counterclockwise twist to the coax cable, it pulls out of the unit, okay? And as you're seeing right here, it does not matter which end of the coax cable plugs in um, to which end of the, whether it's the drum or the machine, they're interchangeable. So what I mean by that, oftentimes when I service machines or do some classes, um, I'll notice that the coax cable is just kind of torqued around the machine any old way. Um, and, you know, you'll see it kind of really twist at weird angles. That can damage the wires that are inside the coax cable and cause fraying, whether you see it or not, or, or you're aware of it or not. So, again, to maintain the health of the unit, I always recommend it just, if you see it as like a twisted up mess, just unplug it from either end, okay? It does not matter which one. Go ahead and take away that, that twist problem and reconnect, okay? Just going to plug this back in at the base and then also at the drum. There we go. And we'll continue moving on up the unit. Okay, so now that you know all about that, I'm going to turn this machine around so we can start talking about the, the neck of the machine and how the locks all work. 
So one of the things that I like to show people is that you do have three locks. And you can see how one lock, if I bring this up to you, they're all kind of the same. Uh, this one's at the middle of the arm. You also have one a little bit lower down, okay, right here. And then there's a final one, which is kind of just in the drum itself. Um, and that's really the drum. It can position just by um, moving the drum up or down. And if you ever have one of those drums that kind of falls down on you, it just means that there's a couple of screws here that need to be tightened and you'll resolve that issue. Okay, so before I show you how to use the lock, I definitely want to point out this grip here, okay? And if I bring you a little closer, you might be able to see how there's um, a, a roughened surface here, some grooves, okay? That serves as a handle for you to hold on to so that you can position the drum without it falling, but it also serves as a lock. Before I show you how to disengage the lock, I'd like to show you that that grip is also a lock itself to keep the drum on, okay? And um, there's even a warning at the front of the unit here. If you take a look right here, we're saying, hey, please keep in mind to not have the white neck showing that connects the drum to the arm because it means the drum can fall off. So to demonstrate this for you, if I give a turn, a counterclockwise turn to this uh, drum, you can see that there's now a white neck exposed. And that means that it's loose and the drum can come off. So if I, just to kind of demonstrate this for you, I can just simply slide this off like so. And even though I'm not connected to the arm, you now have what's essentially portable diathermy. And I think that's pretty handy from a, clini a clinical point of view. You know, you might have a patient that um, maybe just sat with nursing and they have uh, rib fractures, nursing transfer them and they do not want to be moved again. You can sometimes not get this arm where you want it to be, but if you take the drum off of the unit, as long as that coax cable is connected the way I showed you, you're good to go. You can position that right over those uh, ribs, maybe on um, a pillow or two, and uh, you can treat that rib fracture without having to transfer that patient causing more uh, distress or pain, okay? Now, for returning the drum, just keep in mind that as you look, this is just a, pla a black plastic peg. It does not matter which side you reattach the drum to. I'm just going to put it right on like so. Once it's on, I tighten this in the clockwise position, and we're good to go for resecuring the drum. Okay, so hopefully that's a handy tip for you guys uh, clinically, especially if you find that, uh, I can't get this arm necessarily where I want it to go. Now, if I back up the unit a bit, I can kind of show you again, I'm going to lock a couple of these wheels so it's not moving everywhere, but please lock them all clinically as we pointed out before. As long as you're holding on to this drum, you can move uh, counterclockwise each lock. And even while the drums attach, you have a bunch of degrees of freedom where you can position this device uh, to set up patient care. So I usually recommend for therapists to optimize patient care, like the degrees of freedom rather for patient care, please point the arm towards your patient. I think that's better than trying to reach it over the unit to get to where you want to be with your patient. And again, you can see this is where that coax cable can often get caught up on itself. So just be mindful of it. You know, try to position the device or reset the device once you're done where it doesn't have any tension on it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that back up. And actually, what I'll do, I'm going to position the drum up so I can show you some of the buttonology, as I like to call it, the button pushing of this device. So the first thing that sticks out is the power supply. Now, again, there's not a battery option on the, on the SWD. Um, you simply have to push the power button right here, and you'll see a screen. The screen might look new to some of you. Uh, Barry's going to talk about that in the, uh, the next segment about uh, the software upgrade and some of the new features that you'll see with uh, uh, this device. Well, again, after the machine turns on, it goes through some self-calibration. Make sure that there's no problems. If there was a problem, an error message would be uh, noted, okay? And you could either call your consultant or call the 800 number that's on the sticker on the back of the unit to get more um, understanding of what's going on with the unit. Um, but this is the home screen. And if any of you have the Omniversa, it, it's very synonymous, very uh, similar layout. You'll notice that the first options, indications, manual mode, there's favorites, system settings, and contraindications. And if it's okay by you guys, I like to point, you know, point some of these out from reverse. So for instance, if we hit contraindications, a lot of times clinicians call me and they say, hey, Ant, can I do pulse shortwave on a patient that has a bladder stimulator or some other concern that they have, maybe an active cancer process? Well, what we decided to do is build in the heavy hitter of contraindications only, and you'll notice it says page one of five at the upper right here. You can simply scroll through those with the up and down arrows to um, just kind of see if the concern that you have has been addressed. If it has, great, proceed. If not, and we'll go back to the home screen here, which is on the upper left, and you'll pick you right back to where you were. 
Notice that there's also an ACP info icon. Now that's new. Some of you might not have that depending on which uh, software version you're running. But if you hit that info button there, notice that the 800 number is there, um, our website. Uh, there's a whole bunch of um, useful information underneath that tab. Okay, so you could always call. If you can't get a hold of your consultant, call the um, remote clinical service hotline and you'll get an answer right away to um, your contraindication warning precaution question. Okay, now I'm going to hit the back button here just to get back to that main screen. And uh, so we covered the contraindications. The, the last thing I wanted to say about that is there's also warnings and precautions. They're not built into the machine. However, they are accessible typically through your flip chart or we have digital versions of this, what we call the CWP matrix. So if any of you need that, reach out, we'll be happy to supply that to you, digital or hard copy. They're often on the carts or attached to some type of hook on the base of the unit if you need them. That'll kind of help guide you through the most common CWPs as we call them. Okay, so then again, going backwards a little bit, I'm just gonna take you to system settings. Some of you might not be bothered by these things. Some of you might think, oh, hey, the screen brightness is too much, or I don't like the, how loud the speaker is, whatever it might be. Feel free to click on that and adjust as needed and the machine will save it, okay? While we're on system settings, the one, the one option I really like pointing out to you is device output tuning. Okay, this is something that should show up on most of your treatments if the tuning bar has been selected to be on the, uh, in the on position. So what I mean by that is if I click this right here, you see how it says tuning bar off. What that will do is every treatment you set up, whether it's the variable treatment or any heated treatment, you will not see the tuning bar that's in front of you right now. Um, it really lets you know um, how is the coil looking in the drum? Is it at the proper tension to give you the maximum uh, recommended dose of energy? Okay, so that'll come up again, but I just like pointing out just a quick review from the home screen. Just hit uh, system settings, go to device output tuning, and make sure that tuning bar is on, okay? And, I'm just going to hit start here just to kind of show you an example of what tuning looks like, proper tuning looks like. Um, I know from before it's a little hard to see, but actually I think it's coming through here quite well. You have a white bar, and what you're seeing is a black line in, at the mid aspect. That's kind of like the divider. To the right of that black line, you have a green bar. That should be as high as you can get it, okay? And you can see it's uh, nice and high for as the machine is running right now. And then to the left of that, um, that black dividing line, should be a yellow bar and, and that should be barely perceptible if tuning is adequate okay and you can see right now that's exactly the case so the machine isn't registering any kind of error okay now there is a tuning knob that's um on the, the drum and if i bring this around to kind of show you okay right here hopefully you can see this there we go um the tuning knob is at the top of the drum right here and you just turn and that makes the coil expand or contract to get the proper tuning okay so if you ever see an error message, and I can kind of show you what this uh, looks like, we can kind of simulate a problem. I'm going to put the coil out of tune here. Notice that the yellow bar is really high. If it was like that on the VAR or one delta or two delta setting, it's going to tell you, hey, please tune me to get that bar back down where it belongs, which is what I'm doing right now. Once it's uh, as low as you can get it, hit done, and you'll be um, all set with tuning. Okay, so I'll simulate that on another treatment to kind of hit that point home. But that's all accessible under the system settings. So going back home, we'll now get into the operation for uh, talking strategy for clinical application with the Omni SWD. So clinicians often ask me, Ant, what's the difference between indications and manual mode? And it's pretty simple. Indications is going to guide you, okay? So I always tell people, think about indications, uh, the I is info, right? Because that info pops up as you hit it. So I'm going to select indications. Notice there's relief pain, uh, increase local blood flow, relieve muscle spasm. This is all on-label uh, opportunities for using on the SWD. If it ever came out that pulse shortwave wasn't associated with relieving pain, um, I have a USB that I could put into the machine and we could take that option away. Okay, so just by going through indications to select if you should do a, a certain application of SWD for pain, you're doing evidence-based care. All of this stuff is following evidence-based care just with our um, uh, prompt that you see here, okay? So I'm just gonna go with a pain example just to show you that there's that eye that pops up, right? And that eye is for info. So if you were thinking, okay, my patient has pain, I think it's acute, but it's kind of subacute, but they're also describing it to be like acute on chronic, and you're just thinking, I don't know which one might be best. Don't be afraid to hit the info button next to the selections. You can read a little bit about what's intended with the VAR setting for pain application. And again, it says page one of six. 
you'll also see some of the most common applications. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. Some of the more common applications that your uh, clinical program consultant might be going over with you in class. Um, you can read about it. Sometimes there's really nice documentation morsels in there. There's pictures to demo the treatment. Really good stuff. Okay, so let's back up for a second. We're talking about the difference between indications and manual mode. If you like the info, if you like being led with this, you want indications, okay? That guidance isn't there under manual mode, and that's the difference between the two. Uh, manual mode really means you're so good, you don't need the manual. That's how I like to point it out, okay? So if I hit manual mode, notice it's just saying, okay, which setting do you want? VAR, one delta, two delta, or four delta? You pick and you go ahead and treat, okay? Now I'm gonna back up one more second, talk about the difference between one delta, two delta, and four delta briefly. Uh, in a nutshell, delta implies change, right? So one delta, two delta is saying, I want to change the tissue temperature of um, the body part that I'm, I'm working with for my patient by one degree Celsius, two degrees Celsius, or four degrees. So you could think of that as mild, moderate, or vigorous heating. And you know, in the elderly population, if you have a 65 and older demographic as your main uh, patient population, you might even want to look at one delta T as more of a moderate and a two delta T is more of a, a vigorous heating, just based on their muscle mass and, and, and all the conditions that set in into the sixth, seventh, and eighth decade of life and so on, okay? So if you like the old machine, the Megapulse 2, it's just turn it on, select your program, and hit start. It may very well serve you to start on the home screen, hit manual mode, pick whichever treatment you want. I'm gonna take VAR as an example, and then go ahead and hit start. Okay, and you can see that the machine is running right now on the VAR setting. So completely up to you. I hope you like those options. I think if you're new to this game, it's really handy to, to be guided by indications. I would certainly encourage you to start with indications um, and progress yourself into um, uh, manual mode as you get more confident with this device use. Now, looking at the treatment here, again, you'll see that the VAR setting is running. Okay, I'm going to hit stop for a quick second. Um, and this QR that just popped up, Barry's going to be talking about in just a moment, so we're going to hold that thought. Um, but I want to point out to you that while you're on the treatment screen for any option, whether it's VAR, Delta-1, Delta-2, if you click on the um, parameter, it, it, if it can be changed, it'll take you to a screen and you can change it. So what I just clicked on was the time, okay? And although we recommend a minimum effective dose for VAR to be around 30 minutes, you might not have 30 minutes. So you can put in maybe 20 instead, that's fine. I'm gonna hit enter, and you'll notice that that, time's been, that time change has been saved. Maybe you read a, a piece of research that says, hey, pulse duration is probably better at 100. You can change pulse duration, you can change pulse rate. You can kind of modify this to fit your clinical needs and your understanding of the evidence um, as needed. Now, if you don't wanna do that much thinking, totally fine. You can accept what we've given you as the default. That really covers you the majority of the times as far as the research for any setting that the Omni SWD offers, okay? So again, if we go back to this tuning bar, I just wanna zoom in on that. As I hit start, again, notice that there's that white bar that's divided by the black line. To the right is the green bar. We want that to be uh, large. And uh, to the left of that dividing line, we wanna have a small yellow bar. What I'm gonna do now is um, make this device go out of tuning so you can see that the machine is saying, uh-oh, there might be coax cable damage. Go ahead and check what's going on. Um, if you want to call the 800 number, you can. Otherwise, you can tune it yourself, okay? And um, if you try it on the actual screen, it might not let you do it, see, because it's saying that it requ you require tuning. I'm going to hit the tune button. It takes you back to that same device output tuning screen that I showed you under settings. And all you have to do is hit start, and this time you won't get an error message. And you can use that tuning knob again at the, t at the drum. And what I'm doing here is turning clockwise to get that yellow bar down. Once I get it as low as I can, I hit done. The machine says, hey, is that where you want it to be? I hit confirm, and you'll know you did it right because when you try to use the VAR setting, you won't get an error message the second time around, okay? So I know that might be confusing. Let me know if any of you need some tip, extra tips on that, and we'll go over it, okay? Now again, after every treatment, you're gonna be cued if you have a certain version of our software with a QR code, and Bear's gonna talk about that in just a second. I got one more thing to go over with you. Okay, so indications has been covered, manual mode's been covered, what's favorites all about? So under the manual mode, on one delta T, 15 minutes was too much time for what you had fit into your plan. We can simply select that time and change it to maybe 10 or whatever you felt was more appropriate clinically. And once you hit enter, you can see that the time has been changed. 
and maybe you want to keep this pretty standard where it's um it's stored and it kind of alleviates any confusion between PT, PTA, or OTR, COTA, you can hit the floppy in the upper right, and you see that there's a number of programs that you can choose from, okay? I'm gonna select program five here, and I'm just gonna put in um, maybe upper extremity and put heat, okay? Just like that, just to kind of give a, a quick name to this program, what I saved it to. I'm gonna hit save in the lower right right here, and you'll notice that program five is now stored under upper extremity heat, okay? If I go back home, and now it's the next day or we had a long weekend, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm the PTA. What did my PT want me to do for this patient's shoulder before we get started? Oh, that's right, I can go under favorites. I can hit program five, and I can choose run, and now you can see that that five minute change from uh, 15 minutes to 10 has been stored, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that's how you use the favorites feature. You can store a number of, of favorites. Um, you can even start getting rid of them as you need to by just selecting a program, hitting clear, and getting rid of it. Let's turn things back over to Barry so he can go over uh, some of AC Plus features and that QR code that we were talking about. Great, thanks, Anthony. So this uh, webinar, as you know, is, is focused on shortwave diet therapy with AC Plus, uh, but we wanted to touch on a few technologies that are coming on top of what you just saw with Anthony. And we wanted to give a, a brief demonstration as well of how we have taken now this device and all of the indications and all the work that we've done on the actual device itself. And we're using this information to bring it into our cloud and ultimately into our customers' EMR systems uh, to assist with documentation ultimately. So what I've done is, I, I'm obviously, you can see me on the screen here, but I've also got my iPad, another iPad here, another account set up um, on the Zoom meeting here, which I'm gonna start sharing my screen here. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through not the whole application, because again, this webinar is focused on the SWD specifically, but I'm gonna show you some features of how we can use these QR codes that Anthony was discussing there, how we use them with our new applications that are coming, how they integrate into our cloud, and ultimately into your EMR system. Um, before I just jump into the demo, however, I just wanna let you know that we, uh, this, this application we've been building for the better part of two and a half years here, is really focused on all of our devices as well. And we have gone out and implemented this technology across our platform of devices so that we can connect our, you know, our Omniversas, our Omnicycles, all of our other devices that we use clinically and follow along in the same similar pattern. So with that, I'll, I'll let you know, uh, or I'm gonna start sharing my screen on my other iPad. All right, you should see my screen and I'm gonna, I'll open the application from here. And I'll begin taking you through, again, a very high level approach. I'm not gonna go into all the details of the application today, but there will be other webinars on that later. Um, so basically our application talks seamlessly between EMR systems so that we can shadow or take information, whatever is in the EMR system, um, as far as you know, patient information, um, plans of care, discipline types, these types of things. And we can bring that forward from our cloud to cloud handshake into this application so that our therapists can actually be walking around with their tablets and be talking to their EMR system still while also documenting and doing things point of service with or without ACP devices. So the, the software is actually designed to focus a lot on modalities, you know, a lot of our modality equipment, but also to document, you know, therapeutic exercise, things that we're doing with non devices as well. So for our purposes today, I'll take you through how it works uh, with our shortwave diathermy. Um, so you can see in this example, we, we land in this dashboard where you open our application. And these patients that you see here are actually pulled from, again, from the EMR system. So the EMR system is the system of record, if you will. And we go out and we can synchronize with it by hitting the sync button. And it says, pull us all this information that we have over here and show it to me in, in, a, in a format here in front of me. And when I see all these patients that are here, I can now choose, you know, who I'm working with or what discipline I'm working with and continue on the tablet. Then when I'm finished here on the tablet, anything I do, I can transmit right back over to the EMR system. So that's what I'm gonna show you how we're doing today. Um, so if I choose a patient, and there's multiple ways to select one, I'm just gonna select the patient I've been working with. And I could go in and I'm not gonna spend time go through all their administrative personal information, but I can show you at the bottom, you'll see these different tabs. I can show you what we call the device connectivity and documentation tab piece and module, if you will. And this module is actually designed to go back over to your EMR and say, okay, let's bring forward all of our deficits and impairments and goals, short long-term goals, and, and uh, bring them forward into a, uh, an area that I can see now in front of me so I don't have to go back and reference my laptop or uh, you know, my desktop and EMR system there. I now have it here in front of me. 
So I can look and see, okay, what was, what did I add on my EMR side? Okay. From deficits, I can look at my impairments and say, okay, what impairments do I have in that plan of care? So I can say, okay, maybe today I'm treating and like Anthony showed you other pain. We'll just use that as our example today. Okay, I want to treat pain with the patient. So I can actually come over here and I can select, today I'm going to treat chronic pain. I'll use, again, the shoulder as an example. And I could set up a pre-therapy pain scale. So maybe this is a patient that has experienced a 7 out of 10 on the VIS pain scale. And I could save this into their, their uh, uh, file here on our side. And when I come into what we call pre-therapy documentation, it brings this information forward and it says, well, we can do, look at this a few different ways. We can start treating right away. Or we can say, how did I set them up last time? Maybe, maybe I wanted to reference, as Anthony was talking about earlier, you know, did I have the diathermy head removed? Was it, was I, you know, how, did I have it laying on pillows? How was it positioned? And through our application, we can actually take images of placements so we can then bring them forward in the next session and say, oh, that's how it was set up. Now I can see and I can continue on. Or if, if I have any notes from the previous session, I can sit, hit this load previous session and it'll bring forward my notes from my last time. And I can actually see what the device, what I was using, what uh, indications I was using on the device, what settings, again, how the device drum head was positioned, um, and you know, what, how long the, the duration was. All, all of the device information is now here for me. So I can either clone the last session or say that's where I was yesterday, but today I want to you know, increase something or change something. So I get this in pre-therapy. Once I'm good here, I can begin my, my treatment and off we go. And so as the patient's being treated, you know, the, the, the application is just sitting idle and it's waiting for the diathermy to continue or sorry, to end its treatment. And as Anthony was showing you on the, the diathermy, when we finish a treatment there, we hit the stop button. We're generating now with this QR code and it just says, you know, please scan um, this QR code with the AC plus application if you have it available. Um, if you don't have a bill, you just hit okay and it just goes away. But for our purposes today, I'm going to hit the little QR code icon in the top right of our screen, and it's going to turn my camera on on my iPad. And I did have a diathermy, a short diathermy session running in the background here that just ended a minute ago, and it popped up with that QR code. And as you see, my tablet just grabbed it, I scanned right over it, and it grabbed all the information. So this is all the device information, including what device it is, what serial number it is. And this is kind of where we do this confirmation step to say, are you sure it's this patient with this device, you know, and because we want to make sure we're tagging the correct information to them. So we confirm that here. And what it does now is it captures all that data and it brings it forward for us to review. It says, okay, you just told me you did a device with shortwave diathermy and it populates in what we call a device runtime. So if you see on the right hand side, kind of at the top, it says device runtime was 13 minutes and 38 seconds. Okay, wonderful. But now we're, since we are, this is the purpose of documenting, we, we bring forward this little slider bar. You see where it says indicate. And on the left-hand side, you see it says skill time. And we default this to two minutes because multiple facilities, different facilities document different ways as far as what they consider skill time. So this can either be, you know, setting up the diathermy, um, having therapeutic interaction with a patient, assessing them throughout the therapy, you know, uh, readjusting these types of things. And some, some facilities say we document all that time is skilled or some say, no, we document the whole treatment is skilled. So what we do is we provide the slider bar. We just default that at two minutes and we allow the user to scroll left or right. How much time did you actually have that was skilled, you know, technically billable that we can link to a CPT code here. So that's again, I'm just gonna leave it at 14 minutes. Let's say that was 14 minutes there. We can come down, we can say, we can document what the therapy setting was. So maybe I was, you know, in this case treating, the patient in an individual fashion. Potentially, you know, back in the future, we might be back to more group of concurrent uh, settings. Maybe I was treating one patient in a concurrent setting with another patient on electrotherapy. So I could document that here if that was the case. Then I can confirm the treatment location. So men, again, remember before in the pre-therapy, we selected it, we were treating the, the right shoulder. We can add any additional placement notes. So maybe head was on pillow or spell pillow and then we have this feature that again this is per facility per facility you can choose to turn on and use the camera function of the tablet if you wanted to take a picture or multiple pictures of how that head was placed during therapy so if you do you could actually and I'm going to turn my camera on just take a quick picture to show you we can actually capture it's just a picture of a head but 
just pretend that's not a patient. And now you can see that tags into the patient file. And that picture now, again, would be available on my next session if I wanted to come in and say, how did I have that position? This is where it saves and uh, moves forward from there. If we move down our documentation window here, we can see that from that QR code, it, it knows what indication we use. So in this case, I chose on the device, I chose relieves pain. My protocol was two delta T, and it's captured all, what our average power was over that session, our pulse duration, and our pulse rate, of course. At this point, since we are treating pain, we can actually load in the, the pain scale by hitting that load scale button on the right, and we could document post-therapy pain. So again, we would engage the patient, you know, hey, you said beginning your, your level was a seven out of 10, how do you feel now? Maybe they report three out of 10. Great, we're gonna document that in here. We can come down and we can actually assign those skilled minutes to a CPT code. And when I hit the CPT code, it's gonna go out and look at your EMR system, say what CPT codes did you assign to this patient in your plan of care? If diathermy is on there, wonderful, we'll select that. And now we know we have, you know, CPT code 97024. We've tagged 14 minutes, because again, at the top, you remember we slid over and said we did 14 minutes of skilled time. And we have this nice piece of device information that's in text as well, text format. And this is all dynamic text. So you can see that you know, the device on the SWD indication comes in nicely. Skilled time is there. And right now it says skilled time 14. But if I scroll back up to the top and I wanted to change that really quick, maybe it was 17. It automatically adjusts. So you can see here CPT code time has changed, skill time has changed, and it has changed in your text as well. Because ultimately, this text right here is what we are going to transmit right back to the EMR system. So we don't have to go back in, log in, and type out everything that just happened. So, one additional uh, feature that we've added in here is yes, we've got this nice uh, device information that came across the QR code, but we also want to have the ability to either free flow document here, you know, in, in the text box. Or we've also created what we call custom templates. And these are templates that we have some off the shelf ones that ACP has built, you know, for using our devices and whatnot. Or we also have a, a customized builder that you can go in and you can say, build us a library of templates. And we want to say exactly how we document and we can save those in the application. And then all of our staff is documenting in a similar fashion. So in our example, I'm just going to load my templates. It's going to go out and look at my saved templates and I'm going to bring forward my diathermy one that I have saved. And really that's gonna bring forward our paragraph of information that we want the therapist to go in. And as I told you at the beginning of the call, this is still in development, but ultimately this paragraph will also be populated with the device information that you see below here, will also document for you directly into here. So for example, right now this template says, you know, patient's patient, sorry, patient's pain was assessed prior, during and after diathermy treatment and changed from, and it has in brackets, enter pre-therapy documentation VAS pain score here. Well, if you remember, we documented it was a seven out of 10. So instead of having to go in here and type that in seven out of 10, we will automatically pull that forward from the pre-therapy. It'll say it'll populate seven out of 10. And then it says two, enter post-therapy. Now it's three out of 10. So that'll be um, again, automatic for you. And you can read through the template and say, yeah, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. And we can come in and there might be some points where you know we do want you to, or the, you know maybe, the facility wants you to go in and, and document specifics you know, on here. You can again come in here and you can edit any of this live. So you can delete stuff, add text, anywhere you want along the way. And now once you're at the, the end here, you come to the bottom and you hit this review button and it's gonna package all this up and say, okay, what you told me is a session that happened here. Here's all the device information. Here's your CPT code and your skilled time you're so associating with it. And now we're ready to send this off to your EMR system. So in this case, we would just say, yes, that's all correct. We do a final review, and then we hit this transmit to EMR button. The transmit to EMR button would send it back over um, to the plan of care that in this case, this patient only had a PT plan of care set up. So we're fine with that, and off they go. And that's back to your, um, again, your EMR system. So you get a, a data has been transmitted successfully, and you're back into the patient file, and ultimately back into the, the dashboard. So some great features there um, that are coming, and that's again why you'll see uh, if the upgrade happens on your device, your shortwave diathermy, you'll start to see these QR codes pop up at the end of every session. If you don't have the device, I'm sorry, the application downloaded, again, that's okay. You can just hit okay. It, it takes the QR code away, and you continue just uh, using the, the SWD as you do traditionally today and documenting the way you traditionally do today as well. 
but we wanted to share with you some uh, some of those features and uh, drum up some excitement around this because it's very coming very soon. So, okay, Anthony, back to you. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Barry. I can't even tell you enough how that's a game changer. I still back think back to my first clinic days and how. I was just putting pulse shortwave time 30 minutes VAR setting, you know, and that doesn't cut the mustard. So this is a game changer. Um, I hope you all feel the same. Thank you so much, Barry and Anthony. Hope you have a great day. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Stay healthy out there. And thank you for all that you do every day. Thanks so much. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you.